everyone. I'm Kirby. And I'm Sarah. And, and we're, we're Gloss Los Angeles. Angeles. Strivectin is a brand that's long been regarded as top-tier skincare by professionals of all kinds. We personally love how all of Strivectin's products are backed by science. If you're looking for an eye cream to help smooth the appearance of crow's feet and under-eye puffiness, Strivectin's new Intensive Eye Concentrate for Wrinkles Plus is proven to do so starting in just five days. To learn more, visit Strivectin.com. The show came out, and that's all Nate's going to talk about the entire podcast. Thank you for listening. Oh, also, he's kind of annoyed by Assassin's Creed. There you go. That's the news. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even bring up topics because, one, forgot what they were before I started talking. Two, that's how boring they are. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty bad. Uh, it's been a boring industry. Uh, that being said, welcome to the Gamers Through Podcast, your weekly roundup of news and commentary, even if there is none. Uh, We're going to round up nothing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Heard Anything those, else that might pique our interest. Heard those invisible cattle. Sheeple. Stop that. We're six years removed. Sheeple. Move on. Uh, well, I guess... We- there's no point in dilly dallying. No, there's really not because the dilly dally is going to happen later because we are going to talk about Assassin's Creed. So yeah. I'll I'll burn my dilly dallying then. We'll burn through the news. Uh, speaking of non dilly dallying things, Boney M. Yeah, guy can move. Guy can move. Don't know what his name is versus like the three singers. There's four singers, I guess. Mm-hmm. The three ladies and him. But he says like three things and then just dances around the entire time. <laughs> what a time to be alive. It's interesting watching the videos from like, I don't know, what was this, the seventies or eighties there? The old ones, seventies, I think. Compared to the modern one. Yeah, the twenty the dynamic th- twenty thirteen one. Whereas he was the front man and they were backup singers. Yeah, yeah. Now they are the front, front women and, he and he's like yeah. the hype man, basically. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, honestly, yeah, he is. He is. He became the dancer from Mighty Mighty Boston's. Mm. He's the, he's that guy in the ska band that just doesn't do anything but dance around the entire time. Yep, ska. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Good stuff. The sound of checkered shoes on linoleum. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good way of putting it. You want to talk about some new releases, though? I guess so. Give you some things to spend some monies on. This new release list is... Oh, no, it's actually correct, because it doesn't count early early release. So, here we go. Number one, Demon Skin for the PC. Number two, Final Fantasy XIV open beta on the PS5. Ooh, interesting. Uh, number three, Ash Walkers, a survival journey for the PC. Number four, Carly and the Reaper Man on PC VR. Number five, Sa. So I know that says Saga, mm-hmm. but I want to read it as Saga. I mean, because the G's capitalized for no reason. It's a new world. You do you. All right, perfect. Saga Frontier Remastered for PC, PS4, and Switch. Uh, number six, Sea of Thieves Season 2. Sea of Thieves has a battle pass? Or, I don't know. We uh, did a news article on it a long time ago, and I don't know why I remember that. But they did go to battle pass style. All right, then. Things I've blocked out of my memory at this point. Number seven, speaking of memory blocks, Meat Boy Forever for the PS4 and Xbox One. And number eight, Tribal Pass for the PS5, Xbox Series. A uh, screw. PlayStations, Xboxes, and Switch got it. Yeah. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with that anymore, unless it's specific. Yeah, it's a shit show. Um, when's the last time you remember it being this uh, barren? Barren uh, for news for them. For Chuck Norris can walk on water. No, <laughs> sorry, Baron's chat came out. It just oh. it creeped in. Okay. Um. I'm playing my own double drum cymbal hit, but it's as sad as it sounds. Got to get a soundboard. Uh, no, we don't. <laughs> and too especially... Much, too much power for one man. Yes. <laughs> especially with control. One, too much power in, 
in one, one man's hand, if one of us had it, if we tried to alleviate it and said, well, what if we both had access to it? That's actually worse. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's objectively worse. <laughs> That's just both of us trying to zing each other with buttons. It would just be disgusting. Oh, yeah, because then I'd start putting in sounds that you didn't even know were there. So when you go to press one, it's just a cow mooing. Yeah. Fart noises or something. Dude, Farming Simulator 19, though. Let's talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't even no, have any is... Farming Simulator games. I don't, we have any, there's not even a simulator on here. And it's about to be farming season. What are we doing? Chaos. I don't know. Um, But yeah, no, it is. It's barren. I mean, I don't know. I feel like April's usually barren. And then May, there's usually like one exclusive in May. I feel like we've been but in also, this. But also, everything's been delayed. Yeah, I feel like we've been in this like black hole slash holding pattern for like three months. Well, not counting. All right, so not counting like Outriders. Yeah, which has been been doing pretty good. Uh, MLB the show's er- early release was today, so the four day early access or whatever. But other than those two things, in terms of, in terms of like a major release, there really hasn't been one. Mm-hmm. But we also did just walk out of end of fiscal for a lot of people. Yeah. So they had their uh, shit or get off the pot moment. Yep. And everyone got off Does the pot. Does anybody say that anymore? I don't oh. know. Can we not say that? No, no, not not can we. I mean, like, does anybody say it anymore? I say it. Okay. I said it to you, uh, I think, last week, actually. Maybe that's where I got it from. Via Via Snapchat. Oh, oh. <laughs> those conversations. I remember those conversations. Let's not talk about those. Uh, that being said, yeah, it's they. Everybody, everybody ran away. Like, yeah, oh, is, we're just gonna push it. And then, I, did you put Halo in here? Was there Halo news? I don't think it was this week. I think it was last week. Got delayed again. Yeah, I think. I don't remember if we covered it or not. I have podcast I, amnesia. <laughs> I don't remember either. Like, I remember it happening, but yeah. I don't remember if we But it got delayed it. again, and I just went, yeah, no shit. Yeah. It, I don't gonna... think there was any delays this week, surprisingly. No, no, I think, we, I think we were all right this week. Instead, people announced events at which they will announce delays of games, which I thought was weird, Ubisoft. Yep, that's in here. When they announced that Beyond Good and Evil 2 still doesn't actually exist. Oh, I didn't do any specifics. No, I know, but I'm just... Immediate, my immediate thought is that Skull and Bones is finally canceled and Beyond Good and Evil 2 hasn't been crowdfunded yet. <laughs> I think part of the problem, too, is like I've stopped. Like, there's a section I put in that's rumors because, like, uh, we need something to talk about. But I've stopped, like, putting in news unless it's, like, factual. Like, oh, wow. Like, Hold you know, on. like. How dare. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you like if it's just some bullshit like press thing you know like oh uh, my god we're let's gonna talk about we're like, not gonna have a, if we start doing that we're not gonna have a podcast in two months i know well that's what i have the problem i'm running into and then i'm looking at these things that we are about to talk about and i'm like no one really gives a fuck about any of this yeah, yeah. if we if we reach the level of it does matt rate it in because people have interest we're done yeah also we might need to fire ourselves yes unrelated it's, it's a possibility Odds or evens? Uh, every third. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you really want me to do that? Every third. I was just trying to think of a different answer. How many stories are there? There are. No, I'm not doing. I'm not doing every third to you. That's just stupid. Based not even... including the bullshit at the end, which I don't really even really know why it's there. Uh, there's 12. thirteen. Oh no, there's actually eleven. No, there's twelve. Actually, no. There's like six. Because <laughs> some of these are one line, and I'm not yeah. counting. This What's story. funny is you know how there's that section at the end that's like, oh, things that we didn't write full yeah, yeah, paragraphs yeah. on are that's longer got more than, than the... some of the ones that are in the main. Oh, <laughs> uh, you got odds. Okay. Uh, number one. Uh, during the Resident Evil showcase, Capcom uh, Capcom announced that a second demo for its upcoming survival horror game, Resident Evil Village, will release on May. First, unlike the previous Maiden demo, this demo will be playable on all platforms 
Uh, the game will release the. <laughs> the demo will be playable on all platforms. The game will release on, uh, including. Oh, I'm not. Well, I'm not reading through all those. Fuck that. Um, PlayStation's, Xboxes, PC, and Stadia. Uh, the demo will allow you to play 60 minutes and explore both the village and castle areas, regardless of the platform. PS4 and PS5 users will have the option to preload the demo uh, now via the PlayStation Store. Additionally, players on these two platforms will receive early access to the demo on two separate weekends, April 17th at 5 p.m. Eastern uh, through April 18th um, and April 24th through April 25th. Each demo weekend will provide up to 30 minutes of gameplay. This seems like oddly fucking specific you know what i mean like well listen because if they don't specify everyone's gonna run with their minds just seems weird um that being you, said uh you only have 30 minutes to stare at the woman yeah, i know right plan your time yeah, you plan you 30 your minutes to fap <laughs> yeah Go. yeah plan your time accordingly <laughs> um they did minute, say that a bathroom break if you can put your playstation <laughs> in there uh they did say the village will run at 4k 60 frames per second on the PS5 and Series X. I don't need it to run at 60 frames, just 4K. With ray tracing. That's interesting. 4K, 45 frames per second. You know what? I'm here for it. I'm um, not going to play it. Are you? I just don't play Resident Evil games. Same. But I am 110% looking forward to certain people playing it and watching that. Are you curious about how it will run on any of the other systems? No, actually, believe it or not. Do you want to use the graphic you put in anyway? <laughs> well, I'm, I didn't actually look at the graphic. Not to, not because yes. I didn't care either. I'm like, we only care about the PS5 and yeah. Series X. Not to, not to, not or not to, uh, no, but instead of yes and you, but like, no, nah, I was just, I just happened to open it and I looked at the Series S. Parent, the Series S has ray tracing. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Um, I, I've given up on whatever Microsoft says the Series S can't do. So. Yeah, I mean, it's what you'd think. It's not really whatever exciting. they say, they're built on a bed of lies. It's not really exciting. I, I still find it somewhat hard to believe that. Well, I guess not. I guess the new consoles are really beefy. So 4K, 60 frames per second is not out of the question. No, I'd, I'd agree with that. I'm just looking forward to usually. It's not true 4K, though, right? They're doing some of the weird upscaling. Yeah, yeah, I believe they're doing. I th- I think that was the whole thing is that it doesn't natively run. They yeah, have to... it like natively runs at like yeah. There's something. There's business jargon so they don't get sued. Basically, uh, my normal go to to watch Resident Evil games is the one known as, or formerly the artist formerly known as Brown Man. Now Ray Narvaez Jr. His true name, his true identity. As Has he gone? But he goes by his name now. Yeah, he finally he does have. Uh, Ray Narvaez or on Twitch or whatever. So mm. he's got the that YouTube channel whole thing full full that. Um, but he is normally the one I would watch for Resident Evil things, and it's always a great time. So I'm just gonna watch when he does it. Yeah, I mean this one does look good, but not they're my just jam. not. Yeah, Resident Evil just is. It ain't me. I'm not. I'm not about the horror games anymore. <laughs> Because I'm a bitch. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. I've also never been into, like, I think the most horror game I played was Alan Wake, probably. Like, I yeah, I, I messed around in, like, Fear and stuff, but I didn't actually play the games. Condemned didn't play the game. Watched people play. The original Dead Space? Yeah, watched. That's the only one I really played. I liked it. Yeah, Dead Space seems to be the one that people are like, oh, you don't really like horror games? Well, Dead Space is still really good. And it's like, yeah. Okay. That could, um, that's one of those games that if they did a remaster of it, I would not complain. No, but you'd want it to be done by the right people. Yeah, it would have to be done like, really well. Because they could just do the old, cool, it's a remaster. I slapped some lipstick on it. You're like, like Mass well, Effect? We don't speak of that here. I didn't put it in, but I want to complain about it, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Why don't you want to complain about it in front of me, Matt? It's not that. It's just because I agree with everything, actually. It's just uh, irritating because you see the comparison videos and everyone's like, oh, it looks so good. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. Like it. 
it, listen, man, people just have certain knee jerk, jerk off reactions. That yeah, like I'm not saying it's. It doesn't look worse, obviously. No, but, but like, like for the effort that you're trying to put in to do the whole thing, it should look baller. Yeah, yeah, it should look absolutely baller. It does not. It looks like it was a quick turnaround. Yeah, and and we're we're complaining about this, and they're remaking The Last of Us, so which is one of the best looking games. Yep, but we're gonna do Such it again. A fucking waste. Ugh. Because people will buy it. Because people are stupid. Number two. Oh, actually, yeah. And uh, Resident Evil is still up on my other monitor. I moved it over to that one. Oh, yeah. yeah I saw it. I saw it. I was just making sure. You can't really miss it. You can't really miss them. <laughs> hey. There's a lot of them. Number two, both Epic Games and Apple have submitted provisional witness lists. I love when I read. I'm like, provisional. Wait, did I say it? Was that the right word? Let me reread it three times silently real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I just commit to the word, and then I go, wait. Not right. Anyway, app, Apple. Uh, I think it's something with went sitting. Back, went back and ruined it. Maybe. Epic Games and Apple have submitted provisional witness lists ahead of their antitrust court trial next month, which could see Apple CEO Tim Cook and Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney fisticuffs in the courthouse. Imagine if they dueled to, to settle the dispute. With true sabers? Or like Hamilton and Burr? I was thinking Hamilton and Burr. Uh, I like the idea that they have to fence. Because you know one of them clearly does. I think Tim Sweeney would win in a fencing match. But in a but in a gun duel, I think... Uh, Tim, Tim Cook sneaks it out? Yeah. Well, what happens when Tim Sweeney builds a fort? Have you thought of that possibility yet? Tim Cook builds the Iraq. Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. But then you just throw money into the Iraq. Which Tim Sweeney has a lot of. Yeah, but as we know, it just burns on lights on fire because a lot of things don't like to be in the iraq they don't get along (laughs) such a good mad tv skit Uh, the list of witnesses includes executives from microsoft facebook nvidia corp and match group i don't know who match group is i don't either according to a case filing obtained by law 360 is that not the most youtube internet age like legal proceedings site Law 360. Uh, we got to go there after this because I'm curious what that looks like. Yeah. Also, do you know who the law is? I'm but- I'm just ignoring this entire story to make references, but do you know who the law is? Did Judge, you not- Judge Dredd? No. Did you never watch Video Game High School? No. Matt. I tried. It's just too cheesy. Oh, you got to get through. You got to get through. It's a- it can be- Have you ever seen Initial D? You're OB. It's not fair. <laughs> It's not fair. I jammed a deja vu. <laughs> I've watched the first episode of Video Game High School. The first, the first like three are probably are, four times <laughs> trying to like. The first three are are like good, but they're kind of rough because it's just a, it's like a con, it's more of a concept almost, mm-hmm. and then they it flushes itself out. But the law is the person that he knocks the, that tries to do the whole like, grenade thing, and then he comes back, and that's who he shoots. Yeah, he comes back from being AFK yeah, and shoots uh, Played by Brian Ferenzi, but there's a moment where he's trying to be in disguise and everything, and he's like, I'm not the law. <laughs> While he's like clearly standing next to Brian, staring at him. He's like, aren't you the law? And he's like, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know, just something about it makes me laugh every time. But yes, Law 360, we need to see what that is. Cook's examination is set to take two hours while the court investigates apple's corporate values and app store competitors you're going to be there for a while invest- <laughs> investigating their corporate values uh, or for a very short amount of time because there are none yeah <laughs> yeah uh meanwhile sweeney could take up to, could spend up to eight hours on the stand and is ex- expected to testify on epic games history business model relationship with samsung as well as previous discussions with google and apple how are, how are you and uh, Samsung doing these days? You guys still talk? <laughs> <laughs> just picture this just being basically that. It's the it's the parent sees their son that they haven't talked to in 
seven years, and they're like, "Yeah, so uh, you still with uh, you still with Samsung?" And they're like, "I did that three years ago. Where have you guys been?" <laughs> I'm hoping for some good quotes. I want I want a spicy lawyer or a spicy uh, spicy a spicy judge. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for is some spiciness. Yeah, because Tim Sweeney says some shit. Yeah, we probably won't get anything good from Tim Cook. No, because he's too. You can't hear him through the turtleneck. Yeah. Uh, Tim Sweeney will say does, some interesting things. Does they, he break out the turtleneck in jeans? Over. Oh, do you want? Do we start? Want to take prop bets on uh, a- epic Apple court hearings? <laughs> I think from. I think from Tim Cook. Wait, is that his name? I'm getting their names all fucked up now. What? It's just Cook and Sweeney. They're both Tims. Okay, that's what was confusing me. I was like, they can't both be Tims. They're both Tims. Yeah, no, they're both Tims. Typical Tim, CEOs of companies. I think from <laughs> Cook, we'll get like a business casual, not business casual. We'll get like a dress button up. Are these call-ins? Are they, are they virtual? Because that, that does change. That changes Fuck, the outfits. I think about that. Does one have a green screen? Also a throw in. Like, does Tim Sweeney do his entire press con- do his entire thing from inside Fortnite? Is his background Fortnite? <laughs> I mean, it's probably calling now that I'm thinking about it. It probably would be. I would imagine it would be. Because it's North Carolina and, and yeah, yeah. West Coast like. Alright. If they should stream it. Probably will on Twitch. Conflict somebody should somebody should co-stream it on Twitch, just for fun. Who gives a shit? Picture in picture while playing Fortnite. Yeah, like, yeah, on an iPhone. Little, yeah. Oh my god, brain mush. <laughs> <laughs> just to like spit in both their faces. Brain is just melting. Ah. Uh. You ready for some more exciting news? Dude, this entire podcast has been nothing but exciting news. I literally stopped my story six times. All right, number three. CD Project Proyek. CD Proyek. Let me get into character here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> announced two preliminary numbers from its upcoming annual earnings report to give us an idea of just how big it's 2020 and the December debut of Cyberpunk 2077 really were. Wait, those are two separate events? <laughs> Isn't yeah, there how big their 2020 is tied directly to December? Yes. <laughs> uh, for the full year, CD Projekt brought in a record $562 million in consolidated sales revenue. Holy shit. Uh, that number is more than four times what it reported for 2019, which I believe was their biggest year. Uh, and more than two and a half times the company's previous record of $210 million. Okay, apparently not. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know my own story. That looks, like, that looks like the biggest record. And I read the biggest record? Never mind. <laughs> sat in 2015 with the launch of The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Which makes sense. Yeah, it does. Oh, you mean they release a giant AAA title and it sells better? Weird. The company is reporting a net profit of $303 million. That more than triples the company's previous profit record of $89.8 million. Also set in 2015. So, uh, real quick, Cyberpunk sucked, and they made $300 million. Yeah, record profit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So, uh, how about everybody just shut the fuck up? Yupper doodles. Um, There was another little addendum to that about how they said officially, I'm assuming during the same like thing that they were going to continue developing cyberpunk 2077 and the moral of the story was that they weren't abandoning it which be, be very weird to just start abandoning it now i don't know like who would think they'd do that like there's really nothing in there i think it's the rumors of like another witcher and the other the splitting of the team the splitting up the team you're going like half and half type of thing mm-hmm. okay the rest of you keep finishing up cyberpunk we need to move on to the other parts yeah. or Remember that multiplayer story that came out not too long ago? Oh, yeah. I forgot about the multiplayer. Yeah, where they were... Initially, there was talk about it being a standalone thing, and now they're going to merge it into... So that's going to be a whole whole other department. 
Do you think and, people would be upset? A year they, and a half when it shows up. <laughs> yeah. Do you think people would be upset if they if they canceled the multiplayer component? Yes. Okay. People get upset about anything. That's true. I'm just thinking it's a, like it's a if, loaded question. Yes. Will people be upset? Stop there. Inside my own cranium, if they canceled the multiplayer, I'd just be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't it doesn't also doesn't affect me either way. I'm like, okay, cool. I like the like the potential and possibilities that pop into my head. You know, people once again will run limitless with their own ideas. But then it's what gets put into practice isn't what they thought. So then they're complaining that it exists to begin with. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah. It exists, but it's not what I wanted. Oh, shut up. Number four. Sony has released its April update for the PlayStation 5. And Nate zoomed in on his document for no reason. Adding several key features to the next generation console, including the long awaited ability to store, but crucially not play, PS5 games on external hard drives. Uh, yeah, you heard it right. <laughs> you can store them on your drive, but you aren't playing them. You figure it out. Uh, here's some other features. There are better options for quickly disabling in game chat on a system level. Uh, I want to disable it permanently because piss off. Hmm. I wonder if you can do that. Uh, I guess it's probably not because it might be per game. Yeah. But who knows? Maybe. And obviously I'd want the chance to potentially turn it back on, but I don't play for, I don't plan on paying for PlayStation plus anytime soon. So that's fair. Uh, users can also adjust overly loud or quiet players individually. Mute. <laughs> a new feature for developers that will allow games to pre-download updates when the console is in rest mode for faster updates. Was that already a thing on PS4? I thought so. Because I have auto-updated a bunch of games while in rest mode. So... I don't know. I mean, maybe it means not in... I, I don't know. Because I've literally had... I've opened up my PS5 and Assassin's Creed has updated when it was in rest mode. So I'm like, I don't know what my system software will update when it's in rest mode. I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, there's also a new option to automatically switch video output to non HDR when you're using a game or app that doesn't support HDR. Good idea. Yeah. Some of these things I'm like, why wasn't that there to be? Yeah. With? Uh, you can now toggle a one-touch play, which will automatically turn on a connected TV when you power up a PS5 and switch it to the correct input. You can also toggle power off link, which allows the PS5 to enter rest mode if you turn off the TV connected to your console. So that's weird to Interesting. me. I am intrigued. That I have that feature... I had when I got my new Sony TV. Okay. The PS4 in yep. the Sony TV automatically did these things together. Makes sense, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um one another one of those things that's bizarre to me like why wasn't that there to begin with? Yeah. I can see that. I I'm intrigued by it cuz like currently if I'm on my Fire TV, right? It's not it's not bad if the PlayStation's off and I'm on my Fire TV cuz I turn on the PlayStation and it pops up and is like, hey, new thing detected on this input. Do you want to switch right now? And you just press yes and it, mm-hmm. it'll it go. But if I do it from an entirely off state, mm-hmm. it turning in, say I was, I was on the Fire TV last, TV's off, PlayStation rest mode. If I turn on the PlayStation, the TV's still off. By the time I turn on the TV, the prompt to auto switch might be gone. Yeah, so, I get what you're saying. It's just like a, a three second quality of life thing because I'm lazy and don't want to touch a remote. Like, oh, I'm I, I'm not like it's super convenient when no, I no, I, like it's super convenient. But I mean, like in realistic, yeah, my my like most useful application, three seconds. Yeah, but I the qual I'm what I'm saying is I agree the quality of life thing is like, cl- like there's more satisfaction there than you would think. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
like the whole like when I was having the PlayStation hooked up to the my TV for the short amount of time, being able to just switch the input on the TV and it automatically turned the PlayStation on was like the fucking bee's knees. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh. <laughs> I get to remove a button from my life. It's like, oh, we're in the future. <laughs> Is this what it's like, Mr. Science? The fucking Jetsons. <laughs> that is. That wasn't I, bad. I couldn't get, I couldn't roll it fast enough. So it started rolling and then just turned into me going, ooh. <laughs> you know what? I, I thought it was pretty decent. <laughs> ah, I, I trail off. And fuck, I'm stop, gonna stop doing that. Anyway, Sony is also supporting more PC monitors with 120 hertz in this update. Unfortunately, variable refresh rate support is still missing on the PS5. More important, give me that. Also missing from uh, the Sony TV I bought, which was supposed to get an update last year. And they keep pushing it back for variable refresh rate. Not that I need it, but they're trying to sync them up. Double patch day. That's not honestly even a joke, probably. I mean, here's the deal. The Sony TV I got <laughs> specifically marketed and said to be Sony's gaming TV yeah. to go along with well, the know, PS5. You know what's happening. They can't get it to work on either one of them, and the TV they're using and the dev kit they're using are a PS5 and that Sony TV, and they're like, I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, would not be surprised, because are you familiar with ARC and eARC at all? Uh, I would have said dinosaurs and electronic dinosaurs, which, so no. It's like an HDMI protocol where basically you can send the sound through HDMI. Oh, okay. Um, I thought that was just like HDMI 2. E- EARC, which is the new ver- the newer version of it that What's... most modern TVs have. People have got to get better with naming conventions. Broken on, on that TV. Oh, okay. But yeah, why why not, right? If I have it turned on, the sound will just stop working randomly, and I'll have to reboot. That's weird. Yeah. Known thing. Well, is it the... Because you're sending the sound from that to the soundbar, right? Yeah, to the my receiver. Yeah, to your sound system. Huh. Interesting. Yep. Fun stuff. Was that what was happening then one night when we uh, had a call? I can't remember. There was something. Something was wrong with the t- was acting up with the TV or something. Yeah, yeah, that was what was happening. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the only issue I've had with the TV so far, other than it's that E arc isn't working. Yeah, <laughs> it's like all the things. To... Yeah, it's just so bizarre. Um, How bizarre. Number five, Capcom can't, can't do that guy's voice. That's no, too. I haven't tried. I well, I've tried, but like it's too high. It, it's not even high. It's the high and the tone change. Anyway, sorry. He's a freak. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Capcom. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if he's a freak. Capcom is closing the U.S. version of its online store. Visitors who currently click the link at the top of their site are presented with a message that states the store will stop taking orders from May 1st. Uh, Capcom has confirmed to GameIndustry.biz that only the U.S. version is due to close. Capcom hates America. I mean, why waste the money when no one buys anything from your (laughs) store? Hey, just because you're right doesn't mean you have to say it out loud. Really funny... Don't they? No. I was going to say, don't they have stake in Resident Evil still? But I don't think they do. But, eh. I don't know. Oh, well. Well, there goes an online store, I guess. Uh, number six, Apex Legends has over 1 million, 100 million players. It's impressive, right? I guess. I, You know what? <laughs> I assume that means 100 million like accounts have been registered type of thing. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. And it's not well. 100 million concurrent players because that would be a much bigger yeah, that'd statement. Be insane. But hey, they crossed the 100 million players threshold, which is still impressive. Yeah, congratulations. Days gone. Way, way to go, Titanfall Studio. Yeah. Uh, Days gone will be coming to PC on May 18th. 
think I'll play it. Yeah? On PC, yeah. That'll push you over. I wish we do we know the price? I don't think we do yet. Uh I'm assuming it'll be sixty bucks. I would have said forty. So I'm gonna look it up while you're doing the next one, I guess. I'm fucking with my eye real quick. Okay, that's fair. Oh man. Anyway. My my guess is forty. One, because it didn't sell that great when it first existed, even though it's been, you know, touted as a good game. Uh but the kick is it's been it's been a year. I think that is is that the one year anniversary for it? Maybe. It's pretty close. Alright. So the pre order on Steam. Fifty. Ah, that's close. Fifty doll hairs. I mean I say I was close. We're both fucking ten dollars off of that, so I don't know. Price is right rule, so you Ooh, win. true. Price is right, I win. Price is wrong, Bob. Uh, I wonder if like any of the uh, any of the places have it really cheap. Oh, like the GOG or whatever. Mm-hmm. They might not even have it up yet. Has has it been? Well, it's been a couple of days. Uh, I I've toyed with the idea, but if you're gonna do it, I think I'm gonna wait just to just to hear it out. Mm-hmm. Get the idea. Get the feet wet. Get myself a little wet behind the ears. See what's going on. Actually, I think wet behind the ears means I'm playing it. So I'm not going to do that. Ooh. Ooh. See here. Ooh. Ooh, he says while looking at money. Uh, CD Keys has it for $38. Well, I lost then. <laughs> I now lost my bet in terms of the price is right. That's where I thought it would be, honestly. So fifty makes sense though. Forty nine ninety nine. So there's no way they could have done it at sixty. There's no way. I don't know. I always just assume that like Sony's like yeah, but they were doing they didn't do Horizon at sixty. That, that which which was my basis for my pricing. Was Death Stranding sixty? Death Stranding, I think, was sixty. Okay, but I could that could be me just also putting the same <laughs> lens on that. You got to look through a different lens, man. All right, number eight. Ubisoft has pushed back their first expansion for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Wrath of the Druids is now set for release on May thirteenth instead of the original date of April twenty ninth. Now Nate has more time to finish the game before playing the DLC. <laughs> Good uh, news, Matt. I'm going to save myself some money. Uh, the Death Training is still $60. Okay. All right. Well, right. makes sense. That's got a Kojima name attached to it. So Yeah. Uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed. Uh, I don't need any more time because I I finished it. You did. You for, did finish it. For all intents and purposes. Yeah. Uh, in case you're curious, the DLC, this DLC, takes place in Ireland. Oh, cool. Add more shit into it. I Alright, so here's here's my thing. We're getting into it? We'll get into it. Okay. Because we, we, do, we do need to have our Assassin's Creed roundup. Assassin's Creed roundtable, if we will, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Assassin's Creed Longhouse. I, I like it. Right, that was the name of it. They were, they were long houses. Yeah, they were. It doesn't feel right, though. I must go see him in his long house. That sounds right. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, my, you that's played my, it more recently than I did. That's my Avor. Just live with it. Uh, it's better than Odyssey. Not that that's a high bar, but I think it is leaps and bounds above Odyssey. Because Odyssey almost treaded into Black Flag territory for me. Which, saying that among Assassin's Creed fans, actually might get me lynched. I don't know, maybe. There's there's a solid time where we if we ever do a PAX panel and we just say, Nate versus the world, Nate ranks his Assassin's Creed's. 
Ooh. That could be fun. Ooh, that's a f- that bring some people with some stuffed like plush tomatoes because they're getting thrown. That would be an interesting uh, for us to rank our rank Assassin's Creed games. Yeah, because oh, I know immediately we're reversed on two of them. Yeah, or well, one of them I know we're reversed on. Uh, but also you skipped like two of them, two or or, or more. Uh, a lot of them, actually. and we haven't. Neither of us have played Deliberations. I didn't is, play like, China three. and a couple others. I didn't play three. I didn't play Unity, and I didn't play Brotherhood. Did you play? Um, Unity's counterpart. No. Rogue. Nope. I didn't play Rogue. I didn't play Rogue because I played Unity. So yeah, I you know. It was a really weird time for that to happen. Yeah, that was a weird fucking no, fucking weird time. <laughs> that was a weird situation. Um. So yes, it's better than Odyssey. Also, Ubisoft needs to rein it in at Assassin's Creed. I said this during Odyssey. I'm gonna say it again. They did a better job than Odyssey of of reining it in and kind of like, all right, let's all just let's bring it back a little bit. Okay. Cool. You took the concept of bringing it back. Now I need you to go crack a whip and get them to stop working. Because they're just doing too much. They're not focusing, like you said earlier, they're not focusing on stuff they should be focusing on, and they're adding in garbage. I think it's almost, I think there's an argument to be made that it's worse than Odyssey in that regard. Oh, I mean, there can, ooh. Because Odyssey. Odyssey, you could skip everything and you wouldn't be missing out on the experience. Okay. This one, I think you miss out on good experiences by skipping things, but that are entirely optional. Yeah, they don't do a good job of like saying, hey, like this is important. Yeah. yeah. Like they, they force you. And my issue with Odyssey, which you might end up going into, is that. You're forced to do things that could be optional to yeah, complete yeah, yeah. the story. Yes. No, that that is that is true. Part of my issue with Odyssey is also one way too much fucking sailing. Way too much. <laughs> I kind of makes s- sense. I will scream this from a mountaintop. Dude, I stop it. I actually enjoyed that about Odyssey because yeah, I know, but you also like Black Flag because the the whole setting was like it was perfect for the setting. It was still incorrect game design. That being said, did you appreciate the amount of sailing in Valhalla? I was actually okay with it. You want to know why I was okay with it? Because you guess didn't what? have to do it. Like you didn't have to be in control of it. Yeah, you yeah. Could set I a could, waypoint could, and just let it I could do treat thing. it like my horse from Red Dead. Yeah, or my, or my horse in Valhalla. Also, and you could fast travel to your boat. Also, that and what's the, what's the other th- the other glorious thing that being in Valhalla on a boat compared to Black Flag Odyssey and even in Origins it happened that doesn't happen in Valhalla to you. Save, on your boat? save once. Yes. Combat. You don't have to do ship combat. Praise whoever. You don't have to do ship combat. You want to know the one time you have to do anything ship thing? Is when you storm that one specific thing for the mission. And all that is, is you're on rails going forward. Just brace for when fire arrows come. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And I'm like, cool. That's fine. Same thing with when it was Odyssey and you were going to see Alexander the Great. Just go forward, do some bracing things, and be done with it. Odyssey, Black Flag. I have to. I'm. I'm just trying to get to the next place, man. I don't need to deal with. And Odyssey was terrible about about it because it wasn't just me and bad people, which is what Valhalla fixes as well. Me, Saxons. Some will coexist. Others, I must kill. Odyssey is you, Sparta, Athens, and whatever else is going on. (laughs) 
whoever else feels like attacking you. So it's like, I, who, what, do I have a side in any of this? There was no, there was no direction. They're like, you can be in do, choose whatever you want. Go wherever you please. I'm like, stop. How do you, how do you tell me a story like that? Choose your own adventures actually still have an ending, Ubisoft. Believe it or not. Well, Odyssey had an ending. Never saw it. That's a fair point. Made my made my choice to cut and run. Valhalla. Eh. Yes, no, 100%. Valhalla, real questionable ending. Uh, also, Valhalla, more fun to play. Combat in Valhalla is way much, more fun. Much, much more fun. And um, and I like the setting more because I just like the setting more. We had already gone. I, I it was like, oh, well, this, and then God of War, and then oh, Greece. And I'm like, I, just, I don't fucking care. Get me out of this damn rip, this damn lake. Get me away from the lake. I um, or sorry, I guess see the Mediterranean. <laughs> yeah. Traveling was pretty good in, in Valhalla as well, like being able to traverse terrain and stuff. Up until you get to the north. The yeah. north was terrible. Yeah, which I think the reason why the north was so painful is because the rest of it was so much smoother. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're... God, you still also don't need to go to the north. It, no. The it's... north does nothing for you. The only thing the north does for you is introduce backstory to, like, villies. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing else in the north. There's no reason to go up there. Dude, the majority of the places you go are There's like, no reason to go there. Yeah. Um, I think Assassin's Creed needs to adopt the idea of a main storyline. And when I say a main storyline, what they need to... So what they've done now is they'll drop the, the questing list specifically is what I'm referencing here. They have the questing list and they have it broken out by zone. So at your settlement, you or in, was it your settlement? I think was one of the like zones they said, and you had like six quests. It was the Codex pages. It was the Kill Templars. It was to raise your settlement level. It was all that one. So it was. I can't remember if they named it after your settlement name or they yeah, Raventhorpe. Yeah, yeah. So Raventhorpe had its section of quests. Cool. What I need to be above all the zones is one that says main quest. Yeah. Like hey. This will advance the main story we're trying to tell you. Everything else is secondary and you don't need it. But this is what needs to happen to advance the main story. Because twice or three times now, I ended up messaging you going, where am I supposed to go? Yeah. None of this makes sense of like what I should be doing. Yeah. The game doesn't tell you anything. And it's like, I want to go forward in the story and keep learning more. And it's like, what if we just stopped doing the story altogether? And, this you, is the stack, first... and you stack some rocks instead. And I'm like, <sighs> this is the first game that, because we have completely different play styles. Entirely. Favorite part I'm, about it. I, I lean towards a completionist type person. Um, I don't know how you describe. You're like a. Give me the goods, and I'm not worried. Yeah, about like if if your side quests are good, and I feel like doing them, I'll do them. But otherwise, like, give me the goods. This I is mean, the first game that we've played that I've been like that. This, this is the first clearly, game that, we, that we've also both completed in a while. Yeah, that has clearly favored doing more completionist stuff. Yeah, as far as you getting. The like, full picture. Yeah. You like <laughs> there there have been yeah, exactly. There like, have been, I didn't run into problems that you ran into simply because I You did everything. I did everything. So like it would just like it never appeared, which is like not good. Not a good look. No. Cause I, I finished the game at fifty five hours. Mm hmm I believe. Or no, fifty fifty one hours is my timestamp. What was yours? Do you remember? I don't, but it was high. It was really high. Plus a hundred. Um, I want to say it was over a hundred. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not sure. Just on that. just for it's at least if I had to shot in the dark, it's at least eighty. Okay. Just for comparison's sake, Dragon Age Inquisition, 
Yeah. 55. Dragon Age was 120 for me. Yep. Fallout 4, do you remember? Um, no. 55. Witcher 3? 55. I got a weird thing with 50 to 55 hours, and then I can finish again. <laughs> Fallout, I'm pretty sure I'm at 60, but I didn't do any of the DLC. Fallout, I'm at 70 to 80 something DLC. I was 45 to 50 on story completion on like on joining the institute mm, okay. and ending the game. Yeah. Cause that was my ending. I chose, <laughs> but yeah. that's, that's like and fallout was another perfect example of entire different play styles. Mm-hmm. But there was never a point where I, the only time I was missing something was because of little choices I made. So I would have had to reload a save like, mm-hmm. Oh, you went and murdered the railroad. Well, you really can't do anything else with them now, so yeah. you need to reload a save. Fallout, all the other games, we played completely different, had completely different play times. And still get the entire story. And still story. had the entire story, and we were able to talk about it and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, and Dragon Age was the same thing. We just had different endings. Yeah, different so endings became and like choices. literally side quests and world lore is yep. what. And where, then Odyssey, or not Odyssey, well, Odyssey... You finished. I didn't because I was losing my mind. Mm-hmm. Origins, Origins, we both finished. I don't Odyssey re- would have been re- the same way, though. It would have been if you had finished it. But Origins, we both finished, and I didn't have any of these problems. I mean, Odyssey, I meant like same. No, 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 same. no. You're saying, Od- yeah, no, I agree. Odyssey, Origin, I, Odyssey, Odyssey, I would have had the same problem. But like Origins, I we didn't have this problem at all. Yep. Origins was really good. The only time the origins gets weird is they're like, go see Alexander the Great. I'm like, why the fuck do I have to go deal with him? It's like the only time where they kind of like... Caesar. Oh, it was Caesar? Yeah, Alexander's dead. Oh, is he dead at that point? Yeah, because you go to his... Oh, because you go... Yeah. You go to his, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. where he's buried and yeah. Cleopatra and yeah, cause that Caesar, was... and they're all like... Ugh. Hey, E2. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you, you go to see Caesar or whatever. Oh, yeah, because you're delivering a statue, aren't you? I don't fucking know. Because you're trying to broker peace, I think, is the whole idea. I don't I don't even remember. I just was like, I have to go to fucking Rome now. And he plays the chick, and it's just like, oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so there was that whole thing. And uh, I don't know. It just the, – the lacking a main storyline of, of pointing you in a direction is unbelievably painful. Because, yeah, I mean, I got to... What was the first breaking point? The... It going was, to get Sigurd back. Yeah, it was full K. It was after... Like was you, it, it was after I got Sigurd back? Uh, spoilers. I don't know if it was... At, it was it was either after or before, because you're like, what do I do? What do I do now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, well, there was the thing to go get Sigurd back. And or they, you were more like, can I just skip, like... This? Yeah, like, yeah, because the the going to get Sigurd back one, they open up three counties at the same time, and I'm calling them counties. Yep, don't remember what they're actually called. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's my leg. Um, cat got your leg. So they open up three counties, and one of them is where Sigurd is. Folkai has him there, and when you go and speak to Ranvi, she goes. And you choose that one. She's like, oh, yeah, you could go there, but it would make the battle much easier if you have all of your forces go and you could gain it by going somewhere else. And so I chose then to go to the other two places first. But I probably could have skipped to that one, but then I probably would have had to still go do the other ones anyway at some point, the way my game was going. Mm -hmm. Because then the other one was I had to wait for... And I still don't know what the trigger was. That's the other part that pisses me off. I don't know what the trigger was. Because then it was after I got him back. And for him to not get pissy with me and give me the next thing. Yeah, that's I. That's the funny thing, too. To like, you have to get the letter or whatever in your bo- in yep. the mailbox. And I don't remember what the trigger was. But I just went around still doing zones at that point. Doing zones 75 or more below the power I'm supposed to be doing them at. The only thing I can think of is that the zones themselves are the triggers. Right, which then they're not optional. Yeah. So just make them not optional. Yeah. 
It's it's the most fake RPG game I've ever seen. It's so <laughs> bad. It uh... and it's funny because it's, like, but it's it's so good though. Like the oh, hmm. that, might, the that constant... might be a little bit too enthusiastic. No, it's funny. It's it's the same problem with every modern, <clears throat> every recent Assassin's Creed game. What is good is so good that you see the potential. Yeah. And in, what's bad is so bad, you're like, why did you do this? Yeah. So, like, in in true full... Sp- Would you sit down? Just relax. Hang out. All right. Good talk. In the level of... I'm, I'm going to... I'm not going to... I'm not going to hurt you, but you just fucking lay down. You're killing me. Uh, in the level of, uh, you know what, uh, spoilers, I guess. I'm just going to do it. When you're telling me about going to Jotunheim and Asgard and doing all those things, and it's like, you have no, you, the game does not tell you to go do that. The nope. game just says, hey, if you want to build a seer hut and then go get some herbs and like go on a vision quest. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> that doesn't sound interesting. Like, I got other things to do. And then you're like, oh, well, you know, if you go there, and this is, you know, you've, you had told me it before, even I finished the game, I just didn't care to go do it because it's still never. It's a. Like, it's it, not an insignificant amount of time either. It's like 15, 20 hours. Which is part of the reason I didn't want to do it. Yeah. It's that's that long. It's... Like, for me, I could probably get it done in three hours then, but like, it's still. F- that's still, and that's, I mean, that's me being presumptuous, but, like, it's even three hours out of yeah. the main game where I'm, like, I just give me the ending of A4, which, mind you, I still don't have, technically. Yeah. What Like, what is the end of A4 saga? Unless I die in the game, and it shows me that moment, and then it says, okay, if you'd like to continue and, like, explore the world again, we'll reload you to right before you die type of thing. But unless they actually let Avor die in the game, what's the point? You know he's dead because you start the game at his corpse. Yeah, which is so end weird, the game, right? That's weird. So, so end the game at my corpse. It would have actually been great if you got to the final boss and he kills you instead. Which is funny because you go to Vinland. Yeah, yeah. Which is... Where you fucking end up dead. Yeah, yeah. Because he literally says the line as he leaves. Did you hear it? As he as you go to leave, he says, My body belongs to these lands. But currently I'm a something of the seas. Yeah. And I'm like What? <laughs> you just randomly come to Vinland, talk to one schizophrenic person. And a bunch of people you can't understand and go, yeah, you know what? I belong here. And then the orb you find, which opens a giant door, you randomly decide, not for you. (laughs) What? Also, also, you find that orb. Give it to the people in Vinland where the door was. But where did we agree Vinland was? It's America. Right. Or North America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So North America. But where does what's her name go? To stop the world ending again and be absorbed by the Animus and release Bassem. She but- goes to fucking Norway. Yeah. Uh, with the staff, but that means the orb and the other door are probably near Ivor's Ivor's corpse, which they also know. I they're oh, it. Part of me is like, well, there's your DLC. The other part of me is whatever Assassin's Creed game comes out, better not. Better not. That's all I'll say. Just better not. Better not. Don't try me. What's the next story? Is it mine? Yes. No, it's yours. Because I think the next story is also yep. Ubisoft. Yep. And this is the part where I'm going to 
get angry a second time. Speaking of Ubisoft, Ubisoft Forward will return as part of E3 2021, Ubisoft announced on Thursday. Like last year's event, uh, Ubisoft Forward 2021 will be a digital press conference and will showcase a variety of upcoming Ubisoft titles. The event will stream on Saturday, June 12th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Cool. So, also, start setting our calendars for those times to hang out and watch things. Yep. Uh, let's hit some oh, things I hope to not see. Assassin's Creed. You won't. Oh, you'll see DLC, but that's it. If I see a DLC, fine with it. Yep. Entirely fine. If they dare even tease the next one, I'm going to get mad. Don't right. say a damn thing. We gotta do prop bets for E three this year. Okay, we'll figure them out. But like, I don't want to see an E. I don't want to see. You can do DLC for Valhalla. I'm entirely fine with that. I don't want to see mention of what your next one is until next June. Like, I want you to. I want Ubisoft to be able to pull a and happening this fall, same year, announce drop move. I want to see them pull it off and hope it works. Also, because they scare the shit out of me when they're like when. They should have, once again, seen that a two-year dev cycle worked really well. So do that. Yeah. Don't do a one-year dev cycle. Stop that. No, they'll do a two-year dev cycle on Assassin's Creed. If they they don't do it... But I think we'll see it. Here's, here's, Here's what I would allow from the Assassin's Creed franchise. DLC and a remaster. I would allow both of those things to exist. Those would be fine. But don't tell me what your next one is yet. But can you imagine remastering one? Or two? Like the if they said they remastered the Ezio collection, which they did. Remaster? Am I an idiot? They did that, right? Yeah, but it was like, a, it wasn't... A while ago? It was a while ago, yeah. But like remaster one like redo one in its full glory let me run around as the man that everybody's forgotten known as altair yeah i would take a um if you say black flag i'm yeeting you out of this podcast no i mean i was gonna say (laughs) something that also would be kind of true kind of uh controversial i think as um i would take a god of war style reboot of the first game of the first game yeah It'd be very interesting. Yeah. Honestly, I'd, I'd be here for it. Especially if they marketed it right, being like, you know, we kind of, we've gotten a little lost in the Assassin's Creed franchise. We yeah, wanna, yeah. Like, we want to reset and ground ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Let's ground ourselves and let's rewrite the game. Yeah. So, like, the Desmond parts of it make sense and we build it correctly of you in and out of this whole thing. Yeah. Because I think it's still an incredibly cool world idea and everything. It's just Oh, yeah. That, it's been so beaten by its own bullshit that mm-hmm. it's like, I, how much can you actually With listen to it? The idea of Assassin's Creed 1 completely and 100% modernized with current generation PS5, Xbox One, PC uh, tech and like the city which style of combat oh i don't know because yeah, you're doing a if you're doing would, a faithful because that would bring a lot of people's either turn them off immediately or on board that's oh like the, i don't know because that's the thing do you i mean assassin's creed i think they should go to i think it was two or three it was one of the Ezio ones where like your whole thing was the hidden blade, but you could pick up other weapons, but it did severely like hamper you to do it. My thing is, I think they should lean back into the stealth thing and do yeah, yeah. hidden blade, f- and like if you get too much into combat, you're free running and trying to escape. Yeah, yeah, like hidden blade, short sword type of thing. Yeah, because I think that's what it was, and then crossbow again. Yeah, the idea, though, of, like, a completely modernized Assassin's Creed 1 in all the glory of current tech is, like, really intoxicating. 
Like that I, that I, would be really cool. I also this ooh man, you want to hit you want to hit potential like ray trace all the things. Ooh, those sand, puddles, everything. Though. Have you seen the puddles? I want to see some fucking little sand wisps and shit. So we say that, but I propose to you a more controversial idea. Okay. It's a game that we'll call Assassin's Creed. Set in modern day New York City. Same exact concept. Hidden Blade. Taser. As your ranged weapon type thing. It's like Watch Dogs. But not. Say, is this Watch Dogs? No. Because like the blending in all that whole stuff. You getting to have like urban assassin environment type of thing. Underground, in the sewers, the subways. Division's already there. Just put it in there. Like it's not like the craziest idea. But yeah, I would love full it's hard to I say that like thinking it and I'm like visually that would be awesome, but then I'm like they can't fucking pull that off at all actually. No, no. I think what we're gonna get is Templar's Oath and it's gonna be the Crusades. Oh god. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, I think it would be very funny if they made you play as a Templar. Like, truly. And you are just getting hunted by assassins constantly and forever dying. But you keep... It's roguelike assassin. <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah. Basically, you end up... Const- it's like death loop, but in like the Animus usage. So you have, you're have you a person that's an Animus, and you keep... Re- you're an Animus user keep- that keeps reloading multiple Templar lives mm-hmm. to try to figure out where you're supposed to... like trying to put together all the pieces type of thing, but they keep running into the same assassin that they haven't, like, they don't know. None of them have put together who the assassin is yet, but you just always end up running into them. Like, all right, cool. So I figured out this puzzle piece, and then you just hear, in the back of your neck is dead, and you're like, oh, so close. And then your character's just losing it, and they go into another one. And they then they find that piece because they turn around. This is the point they get there and they go, wait. And they look and they find it and they avoid that. They get that piece, get out. And you kind of like slowly are learning roguelike and progressing to get through things. Could be very interesting. All right. So um, we got to stop talking about this because we're giving them too many good ideas that they can ruin. Yeah. Well, or they could throw out and ignore entirely. <laughs> um, also, Beyond Good and Evil 2, don't talk about it. Just... If you talk about it, it has to be coming out within six months to a six months to a year. It can't be it, you can't bring them out again on stage without having a release date. Yeah, um, because they need to just otherwise be quiet. And the problem it. with that theory, that thing, is that <clears throat> that's gonna be true statement for all of their games. <laughs> Skull and Bones announced that it's canceled. Just Cut. announce it. Be like, Cancel it. Okay. Good news. We have a TV show called Skull and Bones. Bad news. There's no game it's based on anymore. <laughs> and everybody should go, okay. Announce Splinter Cell. Yeah. You cowards. You unbelievable cowards announce Splinter Cell. And then announce some random Ubisoft thing like you normally do. Uh, Immortal Phoenix Rising 2. Mm, too soon. That's next year. But I would like to see you try more random projects like that. Assassin's Creed and Immortal Phoenix Rising style. Um, Division. Forgot about that one. The Division cycle is coming up. Rainbow Six would be coming up. For Honor. Oh, they have to show off the other Ubisoft game. Downhill Dirt Rally 5. What the fuck is the name of that game? The one that was delayed? Riders? No. Riders Republic. Riders Republic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. We gotta talk about that. Because they just have to. Don't talk about Watch Dogs as far as I'm concerned. Just kill it and be done with it. Watch Dogs is dead. 
Well, you also can't because Legion just came out. So, like, I'm curious what they're gonna do with the division. If well, after I played Warlords in New York, they just went and brand new bad enemy, and I'm like, <sighs> yeah, yeah. They, I missed the division one. It was so good. <clears throat> yeah, it was so good, and none of you fucks played it with me. You played it with me for a little bit, but. You you jump around between games too much. That's the problem. Like, I don't I'm have, like a, I don't have three months to wait for you. I'm like an in thing, you know. Like I gotta, I gotta get in, and then you get in. We're like, all right, hang play, in there. Play two sessions. You're like, I'm then... in. I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm out. <laughs> we get in. We wow. play like wow's over there. We get in and play like two I'm sessions out for like six months. Wait, I'm in again. <laughs> We'd get in and play for like two sessions and I wouldn't see you for a week. So I was like, all right, well, I guess he's done. And I'll just go hop in something else. I usually left it installed every time we went back. I just left it installed. I just never played it because it was always boring to play it. Like it wasn't boring. So I would, ma- I would match make with random people, but it's not the same when you're not matchmaking with people that you're just constantly talking yeah, to. So like every multiplayer game. Yeah. It's Any like co-op a, multiplayer game. I haven't played WoW in a while for that exact reason. <laughs> I'm not talking to people. It's just kind of like uh, I might as well be playing with AI. I got WoW on here. But yeah, I don't know. It Maybe show me SSX. It's an EA title, but show me SSX. That's Riders Republic. I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, Epic Games has another $1 billion from investors, $200 million of that from Sony, which publishes the company's value to $28.7 billion. Tim Sweeney, the founder and chief of Epic Games, said the new investment will help accelerate our work around building connected social experiences in Fortnite, Rocket League, and Fall Guys, while empowering game developers and creators with Unreal Engine, Epic Online Services, and the Epic Games Store. Uh, Sony Group Corporation's one two hundred mil, almost a twenty million. That's not even close. Two hundred million stake follows a two hundred and fifty million dollar buy in last summer, giving the company a larger but still minority share of Epic Games. Sony on that sneaky upcoming. So that's uh, also th- they're gonna have to invest a shit ton of money to yeah. become a majority. I mean, but for Sony, that's still a lot of money. Four hundred and fifty million dollars, kind of crazy. That's a very Sony thing, though. Microsoft would buy them if they could. True that. Uh, Number 11. During WrestleMania 37 this past weekend, WWE and 2K announced WWE 2K22. The announcement trailer features about 30 seconds of logo treatment and a quick look at the graphics. A typical 2K game announcement unbelievably scary based on what we've watched happen with 2k the last couple times yeah hoping the year off helped but one could hope boy only time uh, will tell that's true uh number 12 wow chains of domination data mining players may be getting some glasses that they've been waiting for forever other things might be happening that Nate's not really going to talk about because the PTR just dropped on Wednesday and he doesn't believe about talking about a fucking PTR until it's at least two weeks from release. <clears throat> how was the, uh, how was the raid? Did you play it? Did you do it? What trade? The new one? The drink, the, Oh, Oh, um, so no. Oh, okay. Uh, all of five people logged in. So instead we fucking ran cowards. I mean, you know, I won't tell them you said that. <laughs> I'll but just, I'll, just also, let me into your WoW channel real quick, and I'll be like, you're all cowards. <laughs> that just disappear. <laughs> and be like, then leave again. Who was that? I'm like, I have no idea. I've never seen it before in my life. Uh, the, we, we only had five people log in, so we ran around, did instances instead. And we still drank. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Like, if you look at the bottle, I drank that one that's like the nail polish or whatever. I probably drank two inches out of that bottle. So, you know, that was warm. That wasn't anything else. That was just warm. I can still feel it, like, just kind of like, I don't I don't know if it's actually that or if I'm just losing my voice type of thing. Hmm. Just the old, uh, the old like, throat burn type of thing. Yeah, yeah, but That's, that's all it really was. It was just like, <sighs> yeah, 
Yeah. But I mean, <clears throat> yeah. It was a fun time. I enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, it, uh, you know, popularity of that raid <laughs> going down. Uh, and just to actually talk on the story, yeah, I don't. People were talking about it with me from the guild of like, oh, yeah, did you see that this is the thing and this is the thing and this is the thing? I was like, if it's class balance, mechanics, or anything like that, I don't give a shit. Yeah. I was like, tell me two weeks before the PTR goes becomes the live patch because then it will be finalized. Mm-hmm. All this is just, here's everything we were working on. Now test it for four months while we find tweak. You know, like some of it will stay permanent, but like, yeah. The you glasses like, thing in the bag, though, I'm assuming. Yeah, that and like that would stay. And there's like new mounts that got added and stuff like yeah, that. Cosmetics. So it's like all of those things, yes, like that mount is not randomly changing to something else. But the, the like, oh, this spell got changed by X amount percent. I'm like, yep. And now they need a bunch. Not now they need a large amount of people to test it so they can get a bunch of data back and go, okay, too far. Let's tweak it a bit. And I'm like, I'm just not, not worried about it. It's, one fucking it it's wednesday so one two three days yeah regular wow three uh, days when rumored this patch wouldn't become live until august so they you know four months of testing that's not even actually a joke i thought that was a joke that's actually real if it drops in august it's four months of testing yeah there you go I'm sure we'll discuss some more things about it. How dare you assume we'll talk about WoW when I'm going to be playing it for so damn long. Don't assume my WoW status. Don't assume you Guild Wars status. Uh, We got some rumors this week. Rumors! New Metal Gear announcement teased for next week. The series' official Twitter account responded to a suspicious account with the words, quote, we have visitors coming next week, end quote. Oh, cool. So, like, more zombies? Or are we doing Maybe. aliens now? I don't know. Because you know that's all they can do now, apparently, is create that Metal Gear zombie game. So fucking dumb. Or whatever the hell. I don't, remember. I don't even remember what the subtitle was now. I don't either. It was the uh, Wave Combat one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was terrible. Uh, Sony wants to get into mobile gaming, as revealed by a job ad. Not, not, no real surprise there. There's money to be made. Yeah, keep investing in uh, Epic, and there you go. Yep. <laughs> uh, Naughty Dog said it isn't working on a new Jack and Daxter, but wishes it was. Then stop making Seven The Last of Us. It's not a hard, like, pivot. Uh, oh, Mr. Sony... Listen, I know we started work on our fifth The Last of Us remake. Can we make anything else? No. You are here to do one thing and one thing only. So what's funny about that statement is like we just we knew this for years and we literally just got a confirmation article that Naughty Dog can do whatever the fuck they want. Yep. Except it's The Last of Us. It's the it's the fucking space meme. It's all the last of us always was. <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember after the last of us, the first one came out and before two was like officially announced, they were like, yeah, we're not sure if we're doing another one. Yeah, but let's just remaster it in case. Oh, my God ridiculous. Yeah. Do you, do you remember that before they announced the second one, they remastered the first one? <laughs> Uh, Bioshock 4. <laughs> it's not even a joke. <laughs> Bioshock 4 will feature an open world setting according to job listings. I'm still so confused what Bioshock 4 even is. Because 3 is not even... Like, 3 is loosely tied to 1 and 2. So, is it worth even calling it 4? Or at this point, should it be doing Bioshock colon subtitle? I have no idea. Know what I mean? I do know what you mean, but... Do you understand... Do you know what I am saying? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Do you understand the words? Uh, Bloomberg Japan is reporting that multiple parties are looking at acquiring Square Enix. Which Square has officially denied. Yeah, I do the same thing when I'm dating. <laughs> Think about it. 
someone says multiple parties are interested in dating Nate. Nate goes, no, they're not. <laughs> All right, so we got multiple parties. Microsoft. Sony. And Sony. Epic? Maybe. Epic's like kind of in the weird spin. Tencent. More likely. 2K. EA. Microsoft probably is like, oh, I want this. Sony's probably like, ah, we don't want you to have it. And that's why they're interested. Yeah, but they're like interested from a non purchasing pr- perspective. They're interested to hit that like weird, like we want to buy IP type things. Embracer Group just raised a billion dollars to buy things. THQ Nordic doesn't give a shit about anything. Coke Media just like Square? Yeah, sure. Fuck it. <laughs> Basically. All right, there you go. Um, that's everything we can think of. <laughs> EA? And then give it FIFA. Can we get a Square Enix FIFA? Because I'm just honestly confused. I want to see it. I don't even know. What does that even look like? Square. Did Square do it? Who does Dead or Alive Volleyball? Beach Volleyball? Yeah. Konami, I think. Okay. Capcom, Konami, one of the two. I think it's Capcom. Konami. I don't remember. Uh, Battlefield 6 may not release on previous gen consoles. Thank God. That would be great, actually. That would be great. I, I was. Uh, I am all here for death to the old consoles. Agreed. <laughs> I'm Agreed. lighting my pitchforks and burning down the town. Burninating all the people. Burninating the countryside. That's true, cottages. Uh, now for some questionable things that we didn't write full paragraphs on, but we wrote more than single sentences because that's what we did earlier. <clears throat> Activision is in a trademark fight with a browser-based strategy game called Warzone. I love that. Yeah. That's great, actually. Uh, guess which one existed first? I'm hoping the browser-based game. Yes. Yeah, okay. I was say, because it... The, that's the only reason they would go for that fight because otherwise they would lose every single time. So the browser game existed well before. Okay. Um, but the issue comes in that they trademarked a month after Activision trademarked. Oof. So it's kind of like a weird... Yeah. Well, good thing I'm not a judge. Yep. Uh, number two, Ubisoft has launched a UK-based gaming channel called GTV. It will feature a wide range of original programming inspired by not only Ubisoft, but by the video game industry at large. Uh, I think they're missing a number. I believe it's called G4TV. Aha. Uh-huh, hey, oh, there. hey, see what I did there, folks. Uh, number three, an Easter egg sword in the original Guild Wars was found after eight years due to some breadcrumb tweets tweeted by a dev and Matt trying to reactivate his account. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Go get that 55 runs again? Yeah, maybe. Kind of want to just, uh, you know, dabble, see what's up. I like that you just are going to go level to 20, kind of hunt some signature skills, and then some signets of capture, if I do remember correctly. Yes. I got. I know, I know my spells. And then you're just going to go sit in, like, Fissure and be like, I'm here. <laughs> That's, hello, hello, old friends. <laughs> that's essentially what the plan was. I was like, ah, I could just you know run through the story and play the game, and then like you know I'll just I'll just do a little tour real quick, look around, and be like, ah, that's cool. Still a nice, here, a nice like bon voyage type thing. Yeah, like I was like, I was like, oh, it would be silly, but then I was like, you know what, I should do this before they shut the servers down. Yeah, yeah, but then it's also like log in while they shut the servers down type of thing. Yeah, I refuse to leave. Start playing the old, uh, like go down with the ship music type. It's just yeah. play taps as the the server's like shutting down in fifteen seconds, and it's just slow violin. Everybody's standing up. Just all right. Number four, Rainbow. Yeah, Rainbow Six Siege is doing a crossover with Rick and Morty. Great. I'm so happy I don't play it. Pickle Rick. Honestly, if just everybody in the game became Pickle Rick. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, it's like skins, basically. Yeah. It's just a giant pickle running around. You're like, is that a pickle that just ran by that window? It's like a play on the... It is Pickle Rick, kind of. It's a play on the rat that he... Uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but... No, I've not seen shit, dude. I don't watch that show. He kills a bunch of rats as as Pickle Rick. He's Pickle Rick. 
kills a bunch of rats and makes basically an Iron Man suit out of rat bones and rat sinew and oh, as a pickle. Okay then. Uh, number four or five. PS4 will reportedly no longer play physical and digital games offline with a bad or missing CMOS battery. Interesting. Yeah. I kind of expect that now that it's out in the open and people have tested it and said, yeah, this is actually going to be a problem. I kind of expect a, a patch of some kind, but I don't know if that would. Well, I a patch maybe, but then also it's it's kind of the, oh, all right, this is the thing now. Can we ramp PS5 production up and then just be like, sorry, not fixing it. Buy a PS5. <laughs> yeah, that would be a Sony move right there. Because the part of it with like a, a bad CMOS battery is like, you can patch that, but like you also want somebody to just have a good one. Because sometimes CMOS battery, like if you, the potential problem is, okay, the console loses power. And doesn't like hit a rest mode or whatever. Like, okay, the power goes off in the house. Mm. Well, a CMOS battery could keep your system like in check for a long enough time, just in terms of like small settings. Yeah, to like recover it. Yeah, but then if your battery's dead and you don't have the recovery stuff of the what your settings were, and it just launches, it's like, well, we launched and formatted. So, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Which would be a very weird safety setting that they have, but I've seen some shit. I'm not saying I've seen some shit. I'm saying I've seen some shit. I would buy a PS5 if I could find one. <laughs> and this is where I would put my PS5 <laughs> if I had one. <laughs> anyway, it's been seven days. What have you been up to? nothing all right good talk uh started watching drive to survive season three watched all the godzilla movies short of the new one um finished the third witcher book that was a rough one he was having a really bad time ah okay. lost his swords that is a giant problem for a witcher uh other bunch of other terrible things happened to him. <laughs> he was basically kidnapped and tortured. That was a good time. Um, we have different definitions of good times. You know, he's a huge man whore. Yeah, my... <laughs> and uh, that's about it. Oh, I went, uh, my wife had a appointment today for baby stuff. Oh. So we went to that. Saw a 3D imaging scan of uh, baby's face. A little fucking abomination. A little alien fuck. Um, oh, it's got that nice elongated skull coming along. It's just, you know, it's just creepy. Spit, spitter skull? or No, well, the problem is that um, for whatever reason, he's really active in the womb. Well, that's, so, a, that's a you thing. So, yeah, I'm active in the womb, that's for sure. Hey, oh, hey. Um, <laughs> So he wouldn't stop moving. So basically, you just get these like blurry, like weird looking. Like he looks like you took a wax baby and just decided to melt him. Oh, okay. So, yeah. well, see, see, I was thinking either that or the old like the old cameras that can't snag good pictures. So it's just people. It's the old like you, you got the photos back, and it's like you might have been going too fast because it's just blurry images. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got a bunch of. Uh, ultrasound photos in the 3d scan the lady printed out like fucking 20 photos she was like hide those don't let the it's like if everyone else sees them they'll be like why didn't we get that many pictures so hide Samantha's, your hide you know, your, uh, your doctor paraphernalia yeah exactly uh what else is new um that's it didn't really play any games kind of going through this thing where like I'm like, ah, I don't I don't know what to play, I have nothing to play, and then when I'm like away from the house or like I'm here, I'm you like come up oh. with a lot of great ideas. <laughs> yeah, like I never played Death Stranding, you know, like all these games <laughs> I remember like, oh I wanted to play this and I never played it. So that's that's fun. I got yeah, here we are with Days Gone. Yeah, Days Gone, because I definitely want to do that one. So I mean you got a month for that one, but yeah. So. That's it though. What have you been up to? Uh like the kids say the huge. 
World of Warcraft, typical uh, messing around on like Diablo and stuff with just some other people. Usually, like my WoW people that aren't playing WoW. When we want to, if we're uh, like potentially waiting for people and we know we don't have that long, we'll just hop in Diablo because we can be in and out of it pretty quick. Um, out of the park baseball. I'm in the World Series. Season season one still, but I did make it to the World Series in season one. Congratulations! Because uh, you know, I know what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if I win it. Maybe updates you should next, uh, updates next week for you. Maybe you should take over for the Yankees. They need a lot more help right now. They're playing like dog shit, and I'm not positive that it's like necessarily a team assembly problem. I think it's I, just like I think it's a team ability problem. Mixed with some other things, but oh god, they're playing like shit. Um, that hat might be staying in the house for a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, the so yeah, that's ba- that's basically been the PC rundown. Um, and then I finished, as we said earlier, I finished Assassin's Creed. So that is that Matt watched the ceremonial deletion off the hard drive. So that one has been completed. Was it like a, a weight lifted off your shoulders? No, that was Odyssey. When I finally convinced myself to, that I don't have to finish Odyssey, that was a true, like, ah, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Valhalla was, all right, cool. I'm, I, You know, I, I, as long as we agree, like, agree that this is the, like, I've done everything I can do without painstakingly the part that would have been painful was hunting down every Templar because we both chose the uh, way to not get hunted in the game. So we didn't we would have had to actually actively go hunt Templars. Yeah. Which would have been which huge. Thank pain. God you did it because I refuse. Huge pain in the balls. I killed everyone that I knew like everyone that I had already discovered I went back and killed. I think there were four people I hadn't killed yet. So I just ran around and killed them real quick but yeah, it was whatever. Um, no, but it, it was a good like. Okay, I've done everything. I'm I as far as I, I'm I'm fulfilled. Just is there anything I'm missing? Type of thing. But we did we talked about it, so I'm I I was good. Deleted. Odyssey was the entire opposite. Where I was like, I can't. I just I have no will to want to finish this because it wasn't enjoyable to be playing it. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed was at least enjoyable, even though I think I finished it. What did I say? Power level two thirty. Yep. <laughs> the I finished it at power level two thirty. The last zone is three forty. Yeah. I just fucked shit up. Granted, even on uh, even then, it took me a little longer. Yeah. Some some like bosses are still annoying because those don't. the The bosses are the problem. They slow you down. The ones where you actually get like the triple stagger bar fights mm-hmm. without a stagger build, yep, become annoying because they will still hit you for half your health in one hit. And I that's why uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I was wearing a light shield. I had had to take my heavy one off because I needed to parry so much more. <laughs> so I just switched to a light one for speed. Yeah, I went the dumb brute route, the stagger build. Yeah, yeah. I, the one thing I never tried up until the end is I never went double shield just to see. I should have done it, and I never did. But, you know, what you going to do? Uh, what are you going to call the... So that's done, and uh, because I pre-ordered the show, I got it at midnight Friday. So I've been playing it, and I'm enjoying it so far. Shocker. Yeah, big who could surprise have, there. Who could have predicted that Nate enjoying the show in a baseball game? Crazy talk. Yeah. So far, so good, though. Uh, playing it on the PS5, obviously, and it visually looks better. Uh, like in game things and whatever. I think the soundtrack's actually pretty good comparatively to last year. It has ACDC Shot in the Dark on it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I didn't even know. And then. Because I'm not usually in menus that much, I kind of I try to fly through them like as fast as I can, and then just get into the game. But I can't remember if I was texting you guys today or what, and I was sitting in one of the menus while I was doing it, and I just start I hear a shot in the dark start, and I was like, "What?" 
That's weird. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Um, so, so far, I mean, I'm sure I'll be sick of the soundtrack in six months, but like, yeah, it's the refreshing good. Uh, the only thing is that I think they botched their Diamond Dynasty menus because I think they're an absolute slog and confusing to navigate. But that's me. So I could see them like changing them. Patching I them. could too. I just think they're Diamond Dynasty specifically. They, I think, tried to make them easier than what they were because they were they were somewhat confusing before. And like I told you, I think muscle memory will kick in at a certain point once I've gone there enough. But they are. It's just like folders on folders on folders on folders. All right. So I click this one folder. Okay. Now I have three more options. I click this other folder. Good old nesting folders. Oh, yeah. But it's like four options to four options to seven options to three options to ten options. And you're like, what? I'm so confused where I am. And then you're like, okay, now I want to get back there after it kicks you all the way back out of all those folders. You're like, I, I don't even remember which one I was in now. It's terrible. Terrible. All right. But that's all I got. Perfect. Then, yep, I'm good. I'm all ready right. for bed. Yeah, it is uh, almost 2 a.m. So we will see you guys next week. Bye bye. Acast powers some of the world's best podcasts. Here's a show we recommend. For more than a century, American food has been dominated by some iconic brands. When people think of American chocolate, they think of Hershey's. When people think of American burgers and fries, they're going to think of McDonald's. But do you know the stories behind them? Cornflakes was an accident. Welcome to The Food That Built America, a podcast from the History Channel and Ozzy, where you'll hear about the remarkable food brands that transformed American life and culture and changed the world in the process. The idea that you're eating something that somebody somewhere far away is eating, that's a connection. Devour every episode of The Food That Built America wherever you get your podcasts. Acast, 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 Acast recommends. recommends.